Seeing none, I recognize the member for Coquitlam, Burke Mountain, to move the motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm happy to move the following motion. Be it resolved, this House unanimously agree that climate change, habitat loss, and pollution are negatively impacting wild salmon survival, and that this House reaffirm its commitment to investments in wild salmon conservation solutions. Mr. Speaker, May 16th is Wild Salmon Day. What better time to celebrate wild Pacific salmon, an iconic species that means so much to British Columbians? And what better time to recommit to ensuring there's not only they survive, but thrive into the future? Wild salmon are culturally significant to BC's Indigenous people. They provide good jobs and contribute economically to coastal communities. They provide food as they have done for thousands of years, contributing to our province's food security. And they provide critical nutrients to endangered southern resident killer whales and many other animals like bears and eagles and much of BC's inland forests and watersheds. But over the past several years, we've seen a dramatic downturn in wild salmon returns to the point of many being threatened or endangered. Climate change is having a, <clears throat> a dramatic impact on the ocean they live in and the watersheds they're born in, causing low summer flows and flash floods and erosion from forest fires. Compounding the problem is habitat fragmentation in rural areas and habitat loss in urban areas, as well as an increase in pollution entering creeks, rivers, lakes, and the ocean. I'm truly honored to fight for wild salmon as BC's Parliamentary Secretary for Fisheries and Aquaculture. For the sake of all those who depend on wild salmon, we must focus our efforts on restoring salmon habitat, increasing abundance and long-term sustainability of the fisheries. The province is committed, and I am committed in my new role, to working with all partners to help restore wild salmon populations, while developing sustainable wild fisheries and supporting communities around BC and on our coast. We all want a healthy wild fishery, as well as the employment and economic activity the BC seafood sector contributes to our province. The BC government jointly established the $143 million BC Salmon Restoration and Innovation Fund with the federal government to help restore wild salmon habitat. The fund supports innovation, infrastructure, and science partnerships to help protect and restore priority wild, wild BC fish populations, including Pacific salmon and steelhead. To date, BC Shrimp has supported 42 projects with over $71 million of funding, with more projects soon to be announced. For example, in Squamish, <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. Speaker. The Elaho River Chinook Salmon Restoration Project is working to restore fish passage and increase Chinook productivity in the lower Elaho River. This project is a collaboration between the Squamish River Watershed Society and the Squamish Nation. The Elaho is one of the largest tributaries of the Squamish River, and this project will remove barriers to fish in the Elaho caused by logging road construction in the early 1970s and it will restore fish passage into the upper watershed. Prior to logging road construction, which cast large boulders into the river below, Squamish Nation members would set up summer camps in the upper Elaho watershed to harvest Chinook salmon. This important project is reducing obstructions and unlocking over 40 kilometers of ideal fish habitat in the upper section of the watershed. This is the kind of success story we're hoping to see more of. And with our commitment to double BC Shrift, I believe we will. With increased funding, we can support innovative watershed restoration techniques like enhanced riparian stream planting, thinning, shade inducement, boulder placement, side channel development, large woody debris placement, headwater storage, fishways, fish passage barrier removal, fish friendly tidal gates and pump stations, lake aeration, lake and stream enrichment and flow control devices. We can also work with the federal government and First Nations to innovate community fish hatchery production and ensure more BC processing of BC caught fish. Last summer, our government updated our wild salmon strategy, which included measures to strengthen the legal protection of fish habitat and obligate protect, uh, project proponents to minimize or avoid destruction, harm, or alteration of fish habitat. And more recently, the Minister of Environment and Climate Change Strategy announced $27 million to help restore watersheds and wetlands throughout British Columbia. This will help communities adapt to climate change by restoring threatened watersheds, wetlands, and estuaries so they are healthier and more resilient to impacts of climate change. 
I will continue to work hard with federal, local, community, and Indigenous partners to ensure this iconic species not only survives, but thrives into the future. We will continue to build a wild salmon recovery strategy we can all be proud of. Like the mighty wild salmon fighting to swim upstream each fall during spawning season, I look forward to continuing to fight for the protection of this iconic species. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.